had gotten a lot of requests to do a DIY version of the Enchanted Tiki Room Minnie Mouse the Main Attraction ears, and at the time to those I had said no, they're just not really DIYable, primarily because the ear fabric is a specific printed design. But I take back my word because here I have today is a DIY that you yourself can fully replicate for the Enchanted Tiki Room Minnie Mouse the Main Attraction ears. This is also the first time that I actually have a pair of the original ears so you can see kind of like a full side-by-side -side comparison. The feathers on my actual headband got a little flattened and squished in shipping so they don't really stand up right. But here you can see what the DIY looks like compared to the original. So the ears themselves are made using printable fabric using the same technique that I showed in my DIY Baby Yoda mouse ear video. And so the primary reason why these ears are kind of so much lighter and less vibrant than the original ones is really just due to the fact that my printer isn't very good. But if you have a regular inkjet printer, you can print out on the printer fabric. You can make the ears, make the bamboo trim. The bow is made with printable iron-on transfer fabric. And then of course we have the flower and the feathers. Here is a close-up of what my DIY version looks like. You can see we have the nice tiki room printed fabric. We also have the bamboo trim as piping on there. The leaf-like bow with flower and with feathers. In the description, there is a link to a Google Drive document that has everything that you need to create the ears yourself, the images for the ear fabric and for the bamboo trim, imagery for the bow along with template for the bow and ears. I'm incredibly excited by how these turned out. I personally like kind of the ears themselves better than the original ones, although I do wish that these were a little bit more vibrant, but I have not seen these actual ears resell for under a hundred dollars so instead of paying an insane resale price you can now diy your own pair so let's get on to the steps of the diy what i realized was that the lounge fly backpack has the same pattern as the ears and the shop disney website has a full photo showing the back i went into the page source to find a higher resolution version of the image and I placed this in a Word document and cropped it to be just the pattern and split it into two halves for each side of the ear. Also in a Word document, I put a bamboo texture pattern I found online. To make the ears, I'm using Crafters Images Photo Fabric. I have this in a roll, but they also sell it in pre-cut sheets. Using your regular inkjet printer, print out two of the ear pattern pages and one page of the bamboo pattern onto the photo fabric. I first recommend test prints on regular paper to make sure you're satisfied with the color. Leave them to dry for 15 minutes, then peel off the paper backing and rinse them out in the sink for 30 seconds. Leave them on a towel to dry. Once dried, we can cut the ear fabric in half and then cut off the excess on the sides, but do not trim the top or bottom. The fabric is quite thin, so I'm going to use some white cotton fabric to line the ears. You'll have four pieces of ear fabric cut, and then cut out four pieces of white fabric to the same size. Sandwich your fabric together by putting right sides of the pattern together, then add a piece of white fabric to both sides. I use an 11 centimeter diameter circle as a template for the ears to trace around. I then have a circle with an arc at the bottom that I use to mark where to sew. Pin your fabric together to prepare your ears for sewing. Sew 
Sew the ears together, leaving open the base where marked. Trim off the excess fabric, leaving only extra material at the open base. And then you can go ahead and turn your ears right sides out. As always, I use this quarter inch thick foam to add stability to the ears. Cut out two pieces using a 10 centimeter diameter circle with an arc at the bottom. Taco fold the foam to fit in the ear. We can then stuff the ears to desired puffiness using fiberfill. Add fiberfill equally on both sides of the foam. I always sew the bottoms of my ears closed, folding in the excess fabric. I've shown this full process in many other DIY videos which are all linked in the description, but you can also glue close the bases. Moving on to the trim, I cut out my bamboo pieces for my printed fabric. You want them to be the full height of the paper, even if it's just white at top. We're also going to use four pipe cleaners for the trim. Take two pipe cleaners, fold over the tops, then twist them together. Trim a bit off the base and fold over that end too. Repeat this process with a second set of pipe cleaners. I'm going to sew a one centimeter wide tube with a bamboo fabric. I have masking tape on my sewing machine to mark out one centimeter. Then trim off the excess fabric. Now comes the slightly difficult fiddly part of turning the tubes right sides out. I've attached a needle and thread to one open end of the tube. Then send the needle through the tube. You can now use the thread to pull the tube through itself. I have a stuffing tool to try and help turn the end in on itself. Continue to work and pull the fabric on one end, then pull the thread on the other end to work the fabric through. Once you get one end through, it becomes much easier to pull the rest out. Then you can cut off and discard the thread. Next, take your pipe cleaner and stuff it into the tube. Make sure it is fully encased inside and does not poke out of either end. Using a low temp glue gun, glue closed both ends of the tube. We're then going to glue the piping around each ear. Work in small sections gluing the piping around the seam of the ear, making sure the sewn seam of the bamboo trim is on the bottom.
Your piping should be about the perfect length to go around each ear. To hide some of the visible white fabric, I'm using some of the excess bamboo fabric and hot gluing that on. You can also use this if your trim isn't quite long enough. For the headband, I'm using my standard one inch plastic headband and I have this beige minky fabric on hand to cover it in. You need a headband template that is specific to your headband, so I wanted to show how to make one. Grab your headband and a piece of paper. Trace along the headband as you roll it out. We only need to trace out about one half of the headband. What you want to do is measure and mark half of the width of the headband on each side. So at its thickest where it's one inch, I add half an inch to each side. The end is half an inch wide, so I measure and add a quarter inch to each side. Repeat this process until you have enough markings to connect all the lines together. Then just cut out your template and it's ready to use. With my headband fabric cut, I add double-sided tape to the headband to stick it onto the fabric and make it much easier to glue on. Use hot glue to glue all the fabric down. With your custom headband template, the fabric should meet perfectly in the middle. I have this white braid trim that I'm going to glue on and line the inside of the headband with. Using a measuring tape, mark the center of the headband, then measure four centimeters down on both sides to mark where the ears will be attached. It's my biggest ear pet peeve when people attach the ears willy-nilly and don't measure. I always sew my ears onto my headband, and this full process is again shown in tons of my other DIYs linked in the description, but you can also, again, glue them on. I infinitely prefer sewing them on because it looks much more professional and finished and isn't too difficult to do. Now for the bow. I made a little design in Illustrator, which I put in my Word document. For this, we'll be using an iron-on transfer paper to print this page on. I'm going to iron it onto the same white cotton fabric I used earlier, first ironing out any wrinkles from this fabric. Cut out your pieces and make sure the large piece is the full height of the paper. Follow the specific directions given on your transfer paper and iron on the design. Wait until it is fully cooled, then peel off the paper backing. Roughly cut out the fabric. I created a template for the bow, which I put in the Word document.
Make sure the template is centered, then trace it out onto the back side of the fabric and then cut it out. The small strip of fabric is for the bow center, so cut it to size and fold over and glue down both edges. Next, glue down the bow. Fold over the edges so that they meet in the middle. Glue down the fabric strip onto the base of the center of the bow. Pinch to fold in the center of the bow and add a dab of glue to hold. Then wrap around the strip of fabric and glue it down. Now you can glue the bow onto the headband. For the bow accents, I have these purple flowers on hand, so I decided to paint them yellow instead of buying new ones. I first primed them white and then painted on a light yellow coat. I glued the two flower pieces together and painted the middle orange. For the feathers, I found these yellow ones on Amazon. They're not quite as flowy as the original ears, but they'll work. I'm going to take orange and green acrylic paint, water that down, and then paint the feathers. With your watered down paint, paint the tops green and the bases orange. When your feathers are dry, trim off the bases to desired size and hot glue onto the bow. I'm also adding on some extra hot glue to secure everything. Then glue on the flower, adding extra glue where needed. And ta-da, your ears are complete. These ears ended up turning out so great. And remember, the document linked in the description has all the patterns and templates you need to make your very own version of these Minnie Mouse main attraction enchanted tiki room ears. So I hope that you enjoy this DIY and also hopefully have a fun time making your own recreation pair of the Enchanted Tiki Room May Minnie Mouse the Main Attraction ears. Hopefully there'll be some more interesting main attraction or Disney designer ears to DIY in the future. But thanks for watching!